I'm going to talk about the state of Lenovo notebooks running Core Boot. Um, I'm um, Patrick. Um, I've got a um, Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering, and I'm a Core Boot developer since 2015 with the uh, focus on Lenovo devices. Um, this talk is privately motivated. Um, I'm not affiliated with uh, companies mentioned here, and I'm not sponsored by those. Um, yeah, my interest is um, in, in Core Boot and open source software got me the job at um, Nine Elements Cybersecurity, where I'm cu currently working as hardware and software engineer. Um, all information gathered here are uh, from free and open source software projects and might not be accurate at all. So why uh, are Lenovo, Lenovo so awesome? Um, there are a few points. Um, they have a big community backed on them. Um, there's a wide variety of platforms, like they support the Intel Core To Do, Intel Nihalem, Intel Haswell, and have first class support. Um, are still actively maintained, which is kind of cool because they're so old. Um, there are no proprietary blobs to uh, operate them. So it's 100% uh, free software if you don't count the uh, microcode and Intel ME. Um, they're very, very cheap on the internet, like on, on eBay, and easy to buy, and have a wrecked case, which is uh, important for me. And they have good documentation, and you can even find schematics online. Um, so um, I'm going to, to talk about the, uh, the past, I'll give some statistics, show the current state that's work in progress, and have a look in the future. So what happened over the last few years? Uh, I just walked through the um, COBOT source and collected some information. Starting with uh, 2015, um, all boards got TPM 1.2 support. Um, we fixed some issues with the uh, shutdown and ACPI code. On the T400 and T500, we got the uh, hybrid graphics support. We uh, fixed some issues with the audio codec. And on the X200, we um, got um, pen support for the tablet mode and fixed some panel flickering. The uh, X60 and uh, T60 got um, um, blob-free graphics in it, so you don't need the VGA option ROM anymore. And on the newer platforms like Sandy and Ivy Bridge, we got the free RAM unit, um, USB 3 support, PC Express graphics in it, and IO MMU support. So um, before that, they used the MRC blob provided by um, Google. And yeah, in 2015, it was replaced by open source software. In 2016, um, we got. Um, support for uh, improved support for the embedded controller and fix some issues with the keyboard. Um, we started to use shared source code for the GPO driver, shared hybrid graphics driver, and got initial support for dual graphics. After this point, it was only possible to use the integrated Intel graphics. Um, the device's chip was in yellow USB port that um, can be used to charge a phone, which is um, essentially always on, even if sh the device is bought off. And um, we got support for uh, libgfx in it, which um, is a graphics in it written in Ada Spark. Um, we fixed lots of um, problems with the docking code. Uh, on the older platforms, you need software to enable the docking station. We, um, on the X200, we added CPU-C states on the newer platforms, support for uh, eSATA, uh, native RAM init fixes, and yeah, lots of other fixes to make the native RAM in it more stable. So there are lots of corner cases that's um, properly handled by the MRC bin blob, but 
um, they weren't handled by the native code. Um, we added support for the postcast stage and uh, libgfx in it. In 2017, there were lots of changes uh, across all boards, like support for the Bluetooth dongle, it can now be toggled from the OS, support for additional USB always on mode, uh, LED control using the Linux ThinkPad ACPI kernel module, and fixed CMOS layouts. We uh, have support for the Sync Light. We uh, now share the hybrid graphics driver and all supported models. Um, again, we rewrote docking code because it still was broken and uh, added some support for buttons and LEDs, which is kind of useful on docking station. And imported the USB always on support to more models. In uh, 2018, there have been um, some, yeah, basically some, some code cleanup. Um, because developers tend to just copy paste an existing mainboard port and just leave everything in um, that might not be needed, so um, we try to get rid of that. We added support for the Intel VBT binary to enhance the graphics in it. Um, we uh, dropped the C native graphics in it um, because it's uh, it does not handle all corner cases while the new um, lab GFX in it um, is able to support every connector, every mode, and um, yeah, has a way better uh, hardware support. On the T400 side, there had been um, a unified code base, so we dropped all the different mainboard models and put it into one uh, unified code base because they all use the same mainboard reference design. On the newer platforms, we now have dual graphics features enabled by default. Um, we can power down the disc discrete GPU when um, only using the, the Intel GPU, which is kind of cool because it saves about 5 watts of uh, idle power. And we have support for the V1 card detection. And this year, there's um, again some, some cleanups around ACPI, uh, removed headers, uh, improved SMBIOS table, um, and yeah, we support more entries in the SMBIOS um, table. We were finally able to set the battery threshold limit using ACPI. Um, re removed some unused C states and hardware in it, added more VBTs, and fixed some issues with the dual graphics. And yeah, that's, oh, okay. And there's the um, parallel MP in it that saves us 26 milliseconds boot time. So uh, as you can see, it takes years to uh, fix bugs and um, get this boards on uh, a state where it's compatible to the uh, vendor firmware, just because everything is uh, driven by the community. Um, so some statistics. Uh, as you can see, there were lots of boards added in the last few years. Um, and right now we have 31 supported Lenovo boards. Uh, some more statistics. Um, this are gathered from the source mainboard Lenovo folder. As you can see in so the, the middle spike here is in 2014, there were over 200 comets, which seems to be kind of cool. But if you look at the next slide, we can see that in 2014, lots of files were added and removed again. And then again, lots of files were added and removed again. So there were high, uh, a very high uh, code fluctuation. Um, yeah, and as you can see, over the time we are adding and adding more boards, so it's uh, growing very slowly. Um, yeah, uh, as you can see, we're doing some some code cleanup, so all the spikes are files that being added and removed again. Um, some more statistics from the um, mainboard folder. One third of the code is written, or that's present there is written in C. We have um, one quarter is ACPI code, and the remaining files are just something that glues everything together, like uh, device tree, header files, 
okay, config and make files and stuff like that. So work in progress. Um, we have the verified boot, original developed by uh, Google on the Chromebooks. It only works on the Sandy Bridge. Um, the uh, trick here is to use the function key. Um, if you hold it down at the boot, you can go into recovery mode without opening the case. And work in progress, we're um, working on um, protecting the spy flash using the Intel's um, protected region inside the spy controller. Um, and we're porting the um, verified boot to other platforms. Uh, you can see here the um, Garrett change if you're interested in it. To do, um, yeah, port the reboot code to other platforms and um, enhance the reboot support in the payload. There's NVIDIA Optimus. Um, basically, it's an SPI feature, um, but there's no specification available. Uh, Lenovo uses the system management mode, so it's difficult to understand what's going on in the firmware level. And I was using the Novo as reference and got a basic implementation on the Lenovo T520. It's kind of working, but need tests on, on other platforms and on regular use cases. And we need to port it to uh, other platforms. That's not done yet. Um, there's more uh, interest in code deduplication, trying to move everything to the device tree. Right now, everything is hard coded in C, which kind of makes no sense. Um, we try to share more code between boards that are very similar, and yeah, so some uh, stuff already has been uh, done this year. There's uh, more to do, like the MRC configuration could be entirely put into device tree. And yeah, there's way more stuff like GPO configuration, uh, audio coding configuration could be moved to device tree. And yeah, we could even um, merge ports into a very interesting scheme. Um, there's the Lenovo T440P support. Uh, it's in Garrett right now. Um, basically, everything's working um, besides the embedded controller space. It has some new bits that are uh, unknown, undocumented. And yeah, what needs to be done? The, we need to find out how it's working. Uh, dual graphics. We need to port the NVIDIA Optimus and improve the ACPI support on that. A small comparison between um, current core boot and the vendor firmware. So um, we have no, no blobs in core boot. Uh, support end of life firmware on, on all devices. Um, and we Optimus on cobalt side is very experimental. Um, Reboot is working, but um, we don't have secure boot uh, while the window firmware has. And uh, we don't support embedded controller firmware updates um, because it's uh, completely undocumented. But there was a cool talk on the Black Hat this, this year, so we might um, support that too in the future. Possible future work. Um, we got the uh, T480. It has a boot guard, um, but um, if you got to the, oh, sorry, does it play? Oh yeah. Um, so it, all those devices have Intel boot guard. If you got one that does not, you can um, change the firmware and run uh, core boot on it. Um, the Thunderbolt support is um, still missing, but um, System76 ported it to their uh, laptop series, so once they upstream it, we have support for that too, and then uh, basically everything should work. As you can see here, you just have to replace the firmware ship with a core boot running Tiano Core's payload, and then it boots up and shows these uh, core boot logo here instead of the window firmware. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, next slide. Here we go. Um, we could add support for the ThinkPad E495, uh, and it's a Ryzen 3. Um, Google added support for the Picasso SoC for their Chromebooks, so it should be uh, easy to support. has a 16 meg flash. Maybe someone is uh, interested in supporting that too. Uh, 
then we have some ideas to reduce the ACPI code, get rid of legacy stuff nobody uses anymore with modern uh, ACPI Aware OS um, because it's it's easier uh, to maintain and probably have faster boot times. Um, there's interest in supporting the firmware update daemon, provide uh, free cupboard builds. Um, uh, oh, that's only possible for uh, core boot uh, and blobs that have a compatible uh, license. And we want to uh, use vboot on all those boards just to have a secure platform uh, that as a recovery mechanism in case something goes wrong. And there's some um, more, uh, yeah, we need to, to improve the Windows 10 support or Windows support in general. It needs special ACPI code. Um, the SyncPad daemon running on that needs special ACPI functions. And NVIDIA Optimus, I'm not even sure if it's possible at all. Um, yeah, but our um, community main interest is in Linux, so we need to evaluate if that Windows 10 can be improved. And that's it from my side. Do you have any questions? Right. Please queue up at the mics again. Uh, for the T480, I'm just a little bit confused. You said you need a model without boot guard enabled, but yes. they all come with boot guard? Is it just uh, they all chip with boot guard, that's okay. true. But it's not, on, not enabled on some models? It um, It is enabled by all models by default. Okay, so then how can you install core boot then with boot you guard? You can't. With boot guard enabled, you can't. So um, the device you saw in my presentation is a special device. That's not, um, um, how do you say, you can't buy it in the retail market, so it's, yeah, it's oh, special okay. device. So you need a special add-on or something. Yeah. Okay. Test. Ah. Ah. Um, do you know if uh, the AMD notebook has something like boot guard? Um, I don't know. Okay. So we just have to evaluate it. Right, and that's it, I guess. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you.